So let's say there's a charge here, plus 4 coulombs, minus 2 coulombs. Let's say there's a xy axis here. And let's say this point is 4, 0. This is in meters. And this is negative 3, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's say you have two charges like that. And let's say that something is making them stay there. So they're not, uh, they're not going to move towards each other. OK? So uh, they're stuck there. We can ask several questions about this situation. We can say, A, what is the force of uh, the electrical force between the charges? What is Fe between the charges? B, where can a third charge be put So where can a third charge Q be placed so that it experiences no force? So is there such a point like that where I could put a third charge? And then C, What is the total force on a plus 2 Coulomb charge placed at the origin, 0, 0, and at 1, 3 meters? So let's analyze this now based on that. So we have two charges that are placed at these points, negative 3, 0, 4, 0. So what is the electrical force between them, part A? So that should be pretty straightforward. 9 times 10 to the 9th, the K. So that's a pretty easy number to remember. It's a 9 times 10 to the 9th. They're both 9. And then uh, the charge of one of them is 4 coulombs. The charge of the other one is negative 2 coulombs. The distance between them is 7 meters squared. Right? 4 and 3, that's 7 meters squared. So do that. Tell me what you get. So it's a big number, right? Because the charges, the charges themselves are big, so we would expect the number to be big. Is that right? Everyone else got that? Now, a lot of times when you're asked to find the force between the charges, sometimes uh, we'll just give the absolute magnitude of it, like one, positive 1 1.47. We're just, we're just saying it's 1.47, the positive 1.47, but it's attractive. 
okay? So sometimes you'll see that where it's just the magnitude of it. Now B, where can a third charge be placed? Where can a third charge Q be placed so that it experiences no force? Now notice I didn't tell you here whether that third charge is positive or negative. Does it matter if that third charge is positive or negative? Well, let's find out if, it, if the charge of that, if the sign of that matters. So for example, let's say that third charge I place somewhere here, and it's, let's say it's positive for now. OK? What's going to happen? If it's positive, this guy is going to push this guy. They're going to repel, right? So this guy pushes this guy. Of course, this guy pushes that guy back. But I'm not interested in the forces on this guy in this problem. I'm interested in the middle one. So that guy pushes that. This one attracts it, right? It's negative, and that's positive, so it attracts it. So the total force on it can't be 0 because the both forces are to the right. If I place it on this side, this guy pushes it again. This guy attracts it again. So it doesn't matter whether I put it to the right of the origin or to the left of the origin. The, it can't be 0. The total force on it can't be 0. How about if, it's, if the charge is negative? This guy pushes it now because they're both the same charge. They're both negative. This guy attracts it. So the total force on it is now to the left. Instead of, uh, if it was positive, the total force would be to the right. So can the force on it be 0 anywhere here? So notice the answer didn't matter whether the charge was plus or minus. OK. The only thing that changed was the force of it. It's be, instead of to the right, it's now to the left. How about if I place the charge on over here? Let's say it's positive. This guy attracts it. That guy repels it. OK, if it's placed maybe in the right location, those forces can cancel, perhaps. OK, how about if it's negative? This guy repels it. That guy attracts it. Again, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. How about if it's on this side? This guy repels it. That one attracts it. OK, can it cancel? Well, directionally, it can cancel. But the problem is this. This one is a stronger charge than that one. So this force is going to be much more than this force anywhere on this side. If I'm closer to the stronger charge, then uh, it's going to be, uh, this force is going to be more. So nowhere here can the force be 0. OK? So it's got to be on this side, closer to the weaker charge. And the actual charge doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. So I'm going to say, let this, this, let this position be x0, and I'm going to solve for x. OK? So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the force, this guy is going to attract, attract it. This is the force between the 2 Coulomb charge and between the Q charge. And this is the force. I'm going to assume for now that this is a positive charge. And then this is the force between the 4 Coulomb charge and the Q charge. And I'm going to say, let the magnitude of this force needs to equal the magnitude of that force. F2Q magnitude needs to equal F4Q magnitude. If the magnitudes of the two forces are equal, then the total force on that charge is 0. 